Hello everyone, I'm John Wilmore, uh, head chef at Kellogg College, um, and today we're going to be making a baked chocolate tart with roasted figs and mascarpone cream, and I've got Judith Hillier, um, our vice president, here to help me make it. Um, to start off with, we're going to get the pastry for the tart made first, um, and we've already weighed out all the ingredients for this, um, and I'm going to get Judith um, to get started on this recipe. So Judith, if you'd like to come forward. Um, so into your large bowl, mm -hmm. if you want to place your flour, yeah. uh, which we measured out, there's 250 grams there. Um, we've got 125 grams of chopped unsalted butter. Um, we've also got 30 grams of caster sugar. Mm -hmm. And um, Do you want the water now? No, we need to rub it in. No, first, we'll, we'll we? rub in first. Um, and I'll just give you a pinch of salt as well. Okay. Um, that. Um, so yeah, if you just get in there, just the consistency of breadcrumbs. Yeah. I'm just going to break your egg and beat it for you quickly and add the cold water so that you can just get stuck in and mix that together in a second. So if people didn't want to do what I've done at home, they could easily just use food mixers themselves. Uh, so a food processor probably rather than a, a mixer because um, basically what you want to do is just cut that uh, flour and butter together yeah. um, so using a mixer um, without being exceptionally careful you're probably going to end up um, making that pastry a little bit tough um, just one thing so when we come to use that in a second add some not yeah. all and then add more as you need. You've probably got a little bit more than you need there. Um, so probably about two thirds in um, okay. would be great. But yeah, if you just get back in there quickly with your hands, those slightly sure. larger pieces that we've got broken down into kind of a finest breadcrumb consistency. together. That looks pretty good to me. Um, so what we're going to do with that pastry now, um, we are going to go and put that in the fridge, leave it for 20 minutes um, and then come back to roll it out. Judith is now going to flour our surface and roll the pastry out into a large enough piece for us to line our tart case. I'm going to step back so that Judith can come forward. Do you want to just lightly flour your hands, Judith? A little bit of flour on the surface and around. Um, but hopefully, if we've got the consistency of the pastry about right, we shouldn't need too much flour um, to get that going. When you're doing this normally, would you go over the rolling pin to put that in or just pick the piece of pastry up? I'd usually put it over the rolling pin. That's what I because... do as well. It's fantastic. <laughs> so, because yeah, I've just... had too many bits of pastry fall apart on that. Fantastic. Then it's been nice and close. Fantastic. There we go. So, we want to try and avoid our pastry shrinking later. So, if you make sure that that goes right down into the edges. A bit like that, is that right? Yeah. What we're going to do now, I'm going to come and do half of the next bit for you okay. uh, if you want to take a step back and then you can copy what I've done in a second. So if we take the edge of the pastry and make sure you press it right down into the corners going all the way around like that. Um, so it's slightly thicker on the walls than normally we'd want. It's going to give us enough to press over the top of the tin in a second and then we can do the roll with the rolling pin, starting from the middle, coming out, and then going forwards, not in one motion, because it tends to tip over when you do that, um, then we should be good for that. So if you want to take back over. And then? Yeah, so starting in the middle, mm -hmm. pulling it either up or down. Get rid of the excess. So what we can do with the excess, if you like, is roll it into a little ball. And then we can use that to 
press the edges of our tile case up a little bit. So if you just right. go down into the corners, yeah, there we go, and then press it, it should come up over the edge a little bit and leave us with a nice neat finish. So that we've got it a nice clean edge at the bottom of the tarp case, and also um, we have that little bit extra over the top that's going to mean that when it does shrink a little bit, that um, we've still got a deep enough case to fill later. Does that look about right? That looks fantastic, Judith. Okay, Judith, now that we've got our pastry rolled out, uh, we need to bake this blind, basically, um, with some beans inside it so that it doesn't shrink back as we're cooking. Um, we're going to do that at 180 degrees um, for 20 minutes. Um, if I give you a piece of baking parchment, which we've cut into a circle the right size, and some baking beans there that you can fill this up case with, which is fantastic. So when we do this, we want to go with enough of them in there that we're up to where the top of the pastry is. Um, just so we minimise the amount of shrink back we've got um, when we cook it. it smells lovely. <laughs> so after 20 minutes in the oven, um, the pastry is mostly fully cooked there. We we're going to return it after we egg wash it for five more minutes just to crisp up nicely. Um, but we're already um, at a stage where this is almost cooked enough for what we're going to do with it. Um, so if we just get a fork, um, give it a light prick on the bottom, um, maybe not even going all the way through, but just to stop any air bubbles forming later on. Um, and then we can just use a little egg wash um, just to give it a brush, just to give it a nice crispy bottom um, and a nice attractive looking finish on there um, as well. There we go. We're going to return that to a slightly cooler oven at 170 degrees just for five minutes. We'll check it after five minutes and return it for a couple more if we need to. Okay, so we're now ready to begin making the filling for our tart. Um, we've got all of our ingredients uh, measured out as per the recipe here. Um, so we've got four eggs, one yolk, ready to go. We've got our caster sugar, our double cream, our 70% uh, dark chocolate, and our butter. Um, I'm gonna step back, allow Judith to mix these together. Basically what we need to do though, is the eggs, yolk, and sugar, we're going to beat in a mixer until they're pale and fluffy. The chocolate, butter and cream, we're going to melt over a pan of boiling water, a bain-marie, in a bowl um, until that's just melted, combined together basically. So if I step backwards, Judith, if you want to come forward and do that, that would be fantastic. Okay. So we're going to put the butter into the bowl and chocolate. Mm. Normally at this point I'd have a small child helping themselves to the chocolate, I don't know if that's the same in your house. I think quite a few of us will have been through that in lockdown, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. half naked doing baking has been a fixture um, of lockdown for us. That is fantastic. We'll... Okay. So that's going to now go and, and be put over some hot water so that it all melts together. Fantastic, Judith. If we move on to the next bit there, um, so add your sugar first while you've got cleanish hands, and then we'll uh, go on to the eggs. Okay. So one yolk. So yeah, one just yolk. Um, uh, so do that as a whole egg, Judith. That as a there whole we go. And then over the bowl. This one. We can do uh, over the white bowl yep. if we just separate that one out. There we go. Uh, again, I can and see you've done that before. Just to fingers go right, yeah. Pop that into there. We'll there get we one eventually where I've managed to separate them. I always go first with the yolk just in case anything happens. It always makes things easier for when you uh, 
Yeah, don't manage to catch it. There we go, there's our yolk. There we go. So the extra yolk, just going to add a little bit of extra richness to it. It's also going to help it set up a little bit more. Because um, this is a tart, it doesn't get a lot of baking later on. Um, we are just going to bake it later for 10 minutes in a hottish oven. Um, and then leave it in a closed oven afterwards, which we'll explain more later. Um, but yeah, that all looks good. Let's go and sort those out. Everything's now ready for us uh, to fill our tart. We have beaten our eggs, egg yolk and sugar together and we've got it to a ribbon consistency. Basically, if I wanted to, I could write my name um, in the mixture with itself, with the whisk there. We've done it in an electric stand mixer. You could do that by hand. It's gonna take you a while, um, probably around 10 minutes of relatively hard work. Um, alternatively, if you've got um, an electric hand whisk, you could do that. That would take about the same amount of time as it did in the stand mixer, five to six minutes. We've also got our chocolate cream and butter mix. Everything's mixed together nicely. It's smooth, it's glossy, and we're ready to go. Um, so what we're gonna do is gently fold the chocolate into the egg mix, um, and then pour it into our tin, relatively full up in there. We'll probably end up with a little bit of mix left over, but hopefully not too much. Judith, I'm gonna pass over to you. Okay, so the key thing here is you don't wanna be really heavy handed because you'll lose all that lovely fluffiness and you're folding it in. Um, you're trying not to lose any of the fluffiness, which is why you're just gently doing this with a spatula or a metal spoon. You don't need something really heavy like a, like a big wooden spoon for this bit. And you can make lots of lovely patterns. Um. We just want to make sure that we end up with a, a smooth mixture here that still has plenty of air in it. And what colour are we looking for it to be when it's all mixed So it's going to be together. quite a dark uh, brown by the time we get to the end there. That, that chocolate's really going to come through. There's 300 grams of uh, dark chocolate in this mix that we've got. Um, and uh, yeah, you're going to see quite a, a darkish mixture by the end when this is mixed together. So yeah, we can just carefully pour that into the, um, the ring there. Um, and we can come quite high to the top. This isn't gonna rise very much in the 10 minutes that it's baking. Um, and uh, when, it, when it's baked, it's gonna have a nice moussey consistency to it as well. Does that look about right? Or should I put a bit more in? One tiny bit more, and then if we just give it a, perfect, a little smooth over so that we've got a nice, uh, top to it. There we go. Lovely. Fantastic. That is now ready for us to go into the oven um, just for 10 minutes um, at 150. Um, and what we do with this one is we bake it 10 minutes on with the timer. And then without opening the oven door, we turn the oven off and we just leave it. It can stay in there for up to an hour or so. Um, and once we've got to that stage, it's just ready for us later on. Okay, whilst our tart's in the oven, we can make the figs um, to go with it. Um, we set Judith up here. Um, ready to go. She's just going to take the wooden end of the fig where it's a little bit tougher off. Um, you could probably do it even go just even closer to the top, just okay. literally the, the very tip of it, just where it's a bit woody. Um, cut them in half that way and then we're going to combine it in a roasting tray. Um, so yeah, just go through all of them. That's perfect. Um, the flesh will just help it to hold together a little bit better. Um, so yeah, that's good. Um, and we're gonna roast these figs. We'll check them part of the way through the roasting process. Um, we can add a splash more water to them if we need to, but they're gonna give off a bit of juice themselves anyway. 
Um, so yeah, it should uh, be a pretty easy accompaniment to do with this. So John, I really like figs, but what would be a good thing to go with a tart if people didn't like figs or couldn't get hold of them, for example? Um, I think mean, it's just a chocolate tart, really. So berries would be good. Um, pears and chocolate go brilliantly together. Um, so berries wise, you could either just do them fresh um, or if you felt like it, you could make a little berry compote, splash of water, tiny bit of sugar, um, whichever berries that you happen to have knocking around would go well. Fresh berries would be great um, as well. Pears, if they're really ripe, just as they are, but if you wanted to poke them in just a little bit of water and sugar, that'd be fantastic. Cool. Right, we've moved on to the stage where we've got our cardamom pods. We're only adding this just for a little extra flavor and a, a bit of a different flavor in there. Jude's just gonna crush these with the back of her knife so that uh, the husk is opened up a little bit. The seeds are there. We can just go in with the whole thing. We're gonna fish those out later, Judith, anyway, so um, we can just put the it in once we've given it a crush. Okay. Um, that's fantastic. And now we can add in, we've got a splash of water there. Um, so just a, probably a third of what we've got there, um, Judith, and we can add a bit more if we need to. Um, but just to, be just to put on the bottom. just pour it over. We, we're going to get in there with our hands in a second and get the sugar on those figs as well. Um, we've got some light soft brown sugar, give it a caramelly kind of flavour. Um, we can just go over the top with that. Just sort of mixing it over. Yeah, yeah. and then just in with your hands with a spoon if you feel more comfortable. Um, give it a mix. Um, and then that can just go straight in the oven like that. As we said, we're checking it halfway through the roasting time, um, adding a bit more time if we need to. If they're already cooked enough, then that's fine. Right, so our figs have been in the oven. Um, 170 degrees um, for 10 minutes. We gave them a toss around and then we returned them to the oven for about another 10 minutes in total in the end. Um, you can see in there, if you look carefully, there's some juices in there, um, but the figs have all softened up nicely. It's not a huge amount of color, but there's quite a bit of syrup that's come out of them and they're looking good for us. Um, so they're ready to go. Um, and now I'm gonna get Judith um, to do our mascarpone grin. Um, what she's going to do, um, she's going to gently beat the mascarpone um, with a spatula, add the sugar in, add half a teaspoon of our vanilla bean um, that we've got here, um, and give that a mix together, and then get in there with the balloon whisk um, until we're up to a pretty thick consistency. Um, so if I step back, let Judith come forward, okay. she can have a go on that. So, so just a gentle mix, Judith on there um, just for a few seconds and then we can get that sugar we've weighed it out and it's ready to go and the vanilla in there as well sugar first. sugar in and then the vanilla in so we've given you a teaspoon now so just sort of half a teaspoon it's pretty strong this uh, paste that we're using in the recipe we've said either some good quality vanilla essence um, or the beans from half a vanilla pot that looks fantastic um, that just another quick mix and then um, we can get that cream in there and then we're going to start mixing it together you can see the mascarpone just changes texture as you start to work with it doesn't it you get the yeah I and mean, that sugar is going to thicken it up a little bit yeah. there um, but once we ditch that cream in there i think which we're good for now um and then getting the balloon whisk in we're going to uh, have to do a little bit of work here um, so, are you feeling strong, Judith, as well? Oh, I'm sure. Does this mean I don't have to go to the gym later? Right, just, so just gently to start off with, as mm. it all mixes together through, you're then going to be able to uh, ramp up the pace a little bit um, and uh, get it all mixed together. So, there we go. So, we've now got our two bits to go with the tart ready. Um, so, I'm going to get the tart out and then we'll have a look at how that's cooked. So our tart has now come out of the oven. 
Um, as you can see, even though it's only had 10 minutes of actual cooking and then the time in the oven cooling down, um, it's firm, it's uh, going to have a nice moussey texture to it, um, but it's not um, as soft as you might imagine after that short cooking time. Um, so we're here and I guess we get the moment of truth. Um, we can just cut through. Um, if you'd like to, um, you could use some hot water with your knife. You'll get a much smoother cut with it. But even with the knife there, we've still got um, a good texture. As I said, a moussey kind of texture through. You can see the air bubbles um, in there. Um, we've said that this recipe is enough for eight. You could probably get 10 people out of this if you wanted to. Um, but assuming um, that we're on eight, then you're going to end up with something around that size. Um, and then when we're ready later to plate it up, um, we're going to serve that with two of our figs. So we can just pop our figs on there. I've got some boiling hot water here. Um, or almost boiling water and some spoons um, and with the cream at this consistency I can just go through make a little quenelle of the cream place that on top of the tart um, and then go back in get a little bit of the syrup that my figs have cooked in and give it a drizzle over the tart there and there we go. That's the dessert ready for the Gordy anniversary dinner. Okay, Judith, do you fancy having a go, plating one up? I'll have a go. There we go. Let's start with the tart. And then it was a couple of figs, wasn't it? Yeah, fantastic. So I'll put one just there. Looks like another one just here and now this is a challenging thing isn't it this is the thing that you always see people struggling with when they do it on um on yeah master chef, master and things, chef like things isn't it and they do just the angle of your spoon if you're doing it kind of rolling so but a dollop is absolutely fine. go with a dollop like that and then get a little bit of syrup on there Brilliant. I can't wait till Saturday. <laughs>